Uh, Tim Strickland, mm -hmm. uh, co-owner co of River Street Suites and River Street Suites Savannah's Candy Kitchen, which is our franchise arm of our business. Mm -hmm. um, my partner is my sister, Jennifer Strickland. She's uh, two years older than me. Uh, we have been on this street since I was six and she was eight. Mm -hmm. And when Savannah and River Street was really just rubble, um, even the Hyatt, the Hyatt was the big, the first big landmark, which is to our west of where we are right now. And kind of when they put their flag in the ground is when Savannah began to grow. And, and I think the, I think the waterfront was redone in about 1977 or 78 by uh, Mayor Don Rosakis. I believe that's the date. Mm -hmm. Uh, my mother, my father, and my grandmother had this wild idea to uh, put a store on River Street. Uh, and there were there were four other businesses before we opened. There was a wine and cheese shop. There was the Boar's Head, which is still in existence today, a restaurant. Um, there was a leather store, which now probably would work. It was well before its time. Uh, the ship's will, which was nautical, again, would do really well now, but didn't make it. Um, and I cannot remember the fifth. Maybe we were the fifth. I don't know. But it was four or five, something like that. I think that's right. Um, but we were, you know, kids when they started the business down here. Uh, it started off as the cotton bale uh, because cotton bales were loaded off the ships here. And these were all warehouses, you know, for the English. We were uh, an Irish and English penal colony. That's what we originated as, 1733. That's when Savannah was founded. Um, but getting back to, to our story, uh, so they opened a Christmas store and a Habersham Plantation Furniture. Uh, we, had, we had lived in Germany as kids. Uh, my father was in the military, so uh, they were well uh, uh, equipped with understanding as far as what Christmas decorations they thought were high quality. And so that's kind of what they brought in. And then Habersham Plantation Furniture was from Habersham, Georgia, and that's a high quality furniture. Uh, it was crafted by artisans in that area. Um, matter of fact, we all have still Habersham Plantation Furniture in our homes. I probably have five or six pieces myself, and they're almost antiques now at this point. They're getting very, rather close, right? I guess 25 years. Um, but so they struggled mightily. They didn't, uh, they didn't do very well. Our father used to joke uh, they, mom and dad had to go back to work. Father went because uh, the rent was fifty dollars a month. That's all it was. <laughs> and this, it was a, it's the Bay Thirteen East River Street that is the main side of the candy store, and then the second level uh, was uh, the the bottom floor was the uh, uh, the gift store, the Christmas store, and the top floor was the furniture, which it should have been vice versa, but that's what it, way it was. Um, but my mother and father had to go back to work. Uh, because they couldn't afford the rent. Um, our mother was a teacher. She was an English and history teacher. And then our father uh, went back to be a liquor sales rep. And so that's how, and then our grandmother sat in the store when there weren't many customers that came by for years and years and years. Um, so it was, I guess, three or four years, about 1980 or 81, something like that. We all take a trip to Atlanta, to the Atlanta Gift Mart. Um, it was mom, dad, me, and my sister, Jennifer. Uh, and I was 11 at the time, and I got separated from the uh, from the party. And that's when I ran, and you maybe know this gentleman, uh, that's when I ran into uh, Larry Wurzel with Calico Fudge. He was a young salesman at that time. Uh, he probably wasn't in his late 20s, would be my guess, something like that. And he said, uh, as a matter of fact, I talk to Larry, you know, all the time still, every, probably once a quarter, something like that. So I uh, uh, <laughs> stumbled over to Larry, and then Larry goes, here, here little boy, taste some fudge. So I went and I got the fudge and it was good. I went back and found my mom and dad and Jennifer. We went back over to the uh, to the to Larry in the fudge pot, the calico fudge, the growing pot, and uh, right there on the spot, Dad, uh, unbeknownst to Mom, bought two fudge pots and they were sent to uh, River Street a couple of weeks later. And that's kind of how we got into the candy business and the fudge business. So, how has the business grown through the years? Well, I have to give you some background of our family a little bit too. So we so we switched all over to candy products in the store. Uh, matter of fact, getting back to the story, Jennifer made the first batch of my sister made the first batch of fudge that ever came out of the store. Uh, it was on right around St. Patrick's Day, and uh, my dad locked my sister in the store, and he goes down the street, and she's about well, she was about 13 years old, and she proceeded to make about four or five batches of mint chocolate fudge. 
<laughs> so he was gone several hours. Obviously, mint chocolate fudge doesn't sell that much anyway, mm -hmm. but she did make the first batches and or batch of fudge. Mm -hmm. So, um, but from there, uh, you know, dad, mom developed the praline recipe, um, developed, which is world class. If you've never had one before, it really is a wonderful product. Uh, he developed the, the uh, caramel recipe, which I would stack it up against any caramel recipe in small batches of anybody in the country's wonderful caramel. Uh, and then they really went into the pecan candy business, and that obviously made sense with Georgia and being pecans and things of that sort. So that's the the blueprint of of that of what occurred over those two or three years is basically the basis of our business now, something like that. Um, our mother and father years later got a divorce. Um, we had built one other store in Charleston, South Carolina, which is Market Street Suites, it's still there today. Matter of fact, next year is 40 years. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got to celebrate that one too. Um, but they got a divorce and, um, and mom received the two candy stores and my sister and I went to go work with our mother and then our father uh, started over again. So he himself uh, created Savannah's Candy Kitchen and they operate now today uh, his second wife and our my half brother uh, operates about six or seven candy stores um, here in Maryland at right across from uh, uh, DC they're in uh, Nashville they've got Charleston Savannah I'm trying to think they've got a couple in the Atlanta airport so he, he, and again he created another business uh, off of what he had done here at River Street Suites we, uh, we there wasn't for 15 years or so there wasn't uh, much communication between both sides and then all of a sudden uh, not all of a sudden um, Jennifer reached out to our father that's kind of what got everything started uh, about, that was about 18 years ago something like that and we came back together as a family uh, from that we opened up several candy stores together and then we also started the franchise business so um, so we were, we've been in business together for the last 10 or 12 years or so our father passed away uh, early May of last year of 2022, May 2nd. Uh, so, um, but during those, you know, eight to 10 years of doing being in business together, we started a franchise business and uh, we have about eight or nine stores. I should know that number off my head, top of my head right now. Um, we actually even opened up two or three stores in COVID in the middle of it, but we, with his passing and COVID, we kind of pulled back on accelerating our franchise business. So, um, uh, but we're kind of in the, we're not in the, we are in the position that we're going to put down the gas pedal again. Uh, we hired uh, Top Fire Media, you know, Top Fire out of Chicago. So we've dealt with them in the past. They were really good for us and with us. Uh, and so they're, they've just come back on board last month. So we're lead generation, we feel like it's going to be pretty strong because of the uniqueness of our product. Uh, we, and we also, we enlisted our franchise to make us franchisable about seven or eight years ago, something like that. Um, and so our, our growth model, what we're going to try to do over the next five to eight years is about, you know, five to 10 stores a year, um, starting next year. That's going to be kind of what we're going to do. So we'd like to grow. We're at 16 stores, 16, 17 stores right now. So we'd like to get to that 50 mark. Um, you know, by the time we're probably in, in our, uh, early sixties, I'm, you know, mid 50 right now. And then from there, we'll kind of decide what we want to do. If we're going to grow the brand more or if we're going to stay where we are. So we, we send out annually about 600,000 brochures, uh, mainly obviously in the Christmas, um, period, August through December, something like that. Uh, we're, um, either one or number two in the city of Savannah as far as shipping during that period. We sh we'll ship out anywhere from, when I say that period, when you know when you get to the Christmas season, which is you know right around Thanksgiving, something like that, we'll ship out anywhere from two to five, six thousand packages a day, something like that. Um, you know, initially it was all driven by the brochure years ago, um, but with the augmentation of of, uh, of you know the web, it, our business model changed. So most of our what are we at sixty percent now? Mm -hmm. So sixty percent of all of our sales are derived in the mail order business from e commerce. Uh, I, don't, I don't see that changing. Uh, quite frankly, when COVID hit, uh, it saved us. I mean, we, uh, what do we do? Quadruple our sales? I don't know, something insane. The first month out, we were selling anything that we could sell. I and mean, we were selling gummies and bags and gummies and containers. We were selling our regular products. I mean, it didn't matter what we put on the website, we sold. 
<laughs> it's pretty much the way it was. And our, uh, when I, so I guess COVID hit mid-March. So our Easter was uh, close to, do we, how much did we do that month? Do you know? It was quadruple of what it Is that right? Would be. Yeah, yes. so we did just in that one month, five or 600,000, didn't we? We weren't prepared for it and we had laid off uh, we, we own seven, we own a hospitality company now. We own restaurants too. So we own six restaurants for building two more and we own the candy stores. So we had to lay off all of these people. Uh, we went, we were at, at that time we were about 300. And so we had to lay off 265, I think, during that period. Um, and if it hadn't been for e-commerce, we wouldn't have made it. That's the first thing. And we obviously weren't prepared for it. We weren't prepared for what that next year, or actually the last couple of years, what I mean after that during COVID, because you know we had to ramp up, we just weren't ready. Mm -hmm. So now it is now we're getting back to 19 sales. That's about where we're going to land, uh, which is still great, still doing plenty of business. But uh, yeah, it 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 was an eye opener. We had to get more efficient. We had to get creative, um, and it was uh, life changing and world changing for us, no doubt. Our recipe is different. I mean, that's the truth. I mean, so many of praline recipes are made with corn syrup or corn syrup based or brown sugar based. And we are white granulated um, and it's the half and half, you know, we're using a rich, rich milk, uh, the butter, uh, real butter. And you're not cutting, you're not cutting corners with the recipe. And, and my, our mother and our father did a wonderful job with the engineering of that recipe. It is the candy portion is what's so, in some ways, from a creative standpoint of a, of a of a person, that part is perfect. But then when you add that Georgia pecan with that oil, and it cuts that sugar, that's when it becomes magic. It really does. It's different, and that nut is different, and that's why we only use Georgia pecans. When you look at the past fifty years, mm -hmm. has there anything? Is there anything that's changed about your your recipe, about your process, about the way you approach your your candy and confectionery products? You know, I mean, obviously we have technology that so many people in the candy manufacturing world, you know, whether it's a Tex Wrap or a Doughboy or Savage Cookers or Hill Hilliard's Chocolate Lines. I mean, so yeah. You know, we're everything, not everything is automated, but we're very automated in a lot of different ways that we never were before. 